Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, last year in May, the US government put Huawei on its list of companies to be barred from buying American products. This included Google, mobile services, which meant Huawei would no longer have access to apps like Gmail and YouTube. At the time, Huawei was on track to become the largest smartphone manufacturer in the world. And I'm sure many of you own a Huawei phone yourself. Now, despite this, the company still overtook Apple to become the second largest manufacturer and recently they announced some incredible new devices or well re released I suppose some incredible new devices in South Africa and of course today we are joined by Chief Technology Officer at Huawei South Africa uh, Akram Mohammed to chat about some of those devices and of course what the future holds for Huawei welcome to the show Thank you very much. Lovely to have you here. Great to be here. You Great show today, had, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> now, you guys must have had quite a year, but, you know, because I'm so extra, I think <laughs> that's why I'm so in love with the XS. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. I love that these flip foldables are now coming back into fashion. Yeah, you know, um, foldables, I think, is the next trend in the smartphone industry. Yeah. Everything, you know, where, where does it go, go, go to next? How do you keep innovating? Because everybody has great cameras. Yeah. Um, everybody has great processor, processor speeds. So what happens next? And I think the next innovation is really foldable. How do you transform yeah. what you're able to do with a smartphone? Can I see the new foldable? Sure, certainly. So this is the Mate XS. Okay. But what you would notice that right at the outset is we've taken a very different look at it compared to other manufacturers. Yeah. We wanted to retain the essence of what a smartphone is. So apart from just being able to open it up into a tablet, you don't use the tablet all the time. Your smartphone is your primary device. You know what? Nobody's ever going to need a laptop anymore. Yeah. So if, I mean, right now, we didn't want to lose the essence. So you can see yeah. what a large so screen still screen looks like it still looks phone. like a regular yeah. phone and you are able to use that because that's your primary phone. Yes. But when you want to be productive, that's when the magic happens. Yeah. You got a little button on the back, just yeah. pop it open and it comes into a full eight inch no. tablet. How sexy is that? That is stunning. And look how slim the profile is. And that's is. the actual screen. That's the, the actual that screen. That's correct. And so you can watch a movie on this on a plane. You can totally. Do you can read ebooks. You are able to this do your emails. So you are able to amazing. open up documents. It's it's just perfect. This is phenomenal. So this is coming into South Africa. Then there's another phone coming out. The five. The y Y7P. Y7P. Yeah, so that's a more entry-level handset, um, and that will be coming in at a price point of around three and a half thousand rand. Yeah. But still, with flagship features, it's got a triple AI camera, 48 megapixel at that, great battery, large screen. So we are trying to cover all the price points and give South Africans true value because that's what Huawei has become known for. Exactly. And why should be people? Why should people, you know, be investing? I suppose in HMS at the moment and uh, buy, be, be buying these phones. Yeah. Well, I think. Um, Maybe perhaps I should explain what HMS is. Yes. You know, um, with this entity list that took place, there's quite a bit of misconception and misunderstanding in the marketplace that we cannot use or applications will not be functional. It's a new operating system. Yeah. It's not a new operating system. There's no system. Google anymore. Especially. Yeah. So there's no Google services now. But Android is open source. Yeah. And okay. by virtue okay. of it being open source, any manufacturer can use that and customize it. So the devices we are launching are still Android. Okay. Now, consumers, you and I for that matter, yeah. we don't operate on an op uh, or, or function on an operating system level, on an OS level, or even on core services. Yeah. For us, what's important is, do my applications work? Yes. And where do I get it from? Exactly. And this is what Huawei is saying. Yes, it's Android, so your Android apps will work. So you've got an app gallery now. Yeah, what that's does correct. that include? And what so is the app gallery is the repository where we house all of the applications. Yeah. So instead of Google's Play Store, what we are unable to use are Google's licensed applications, which they charge a fee for. Yeah. Um, we won't to be having the Play Store as an example. That's replaced now by Huawei's App Gallery. Okay. Um, and that's where you go and get all of your applications. And but your you can use your same apps. Yes, you can use your same applications because it's Android. For example, Google's licensed apps, the likes of YouTube, the likes of Gmail, yeah. the applications will not be on the device and we cannot preload it. Yeah. That does not mean you as a consumer cannot use Gmail because Gmail, the account belongs to you. Okay. You can load it onto Outlook for that matter or any yeah. email client. Oh, totally. So okay, it's, that I, makes so much I sense. Think it's more but the education what is side part. loading? Side loading is if you do not have an application directly from the app store and you're taking it from a third party store, perhaps you're downloading a file okay. from the internet from a web page okay. and you side load those applications. It's still functional, but you yeah. just have another way of doing it. And, but then that can be quite dangerous, no? Or what's your take on well, it? Should we be side loading? <laughs> 
Actually, it could be quite dangerous if you're on the standard Android platform. Okay. Um, not so much so with Huawei because we do agree it is dangerous and there's a concern, especially when it comes to malware. Mm. So firstly, we have the app gallery. That's where you can go and download your applications. Mm -hmm. But over and above that, we are the only Android manufacturer at the moment that will run a scan on every single application prior to installation. Oh, amazing. And we will say to you, and it's now safe to install, go ahead. Okay. Whereas on a standard Android phone, it asks you to allow unknown sources. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, well, then the risk is on you. So yeah. we have that second layer. Over and above that, we have a built-in antivirus on the handset, okay. which will scan any malware, and if it picks up something dangerous, it will remove it off the device yeah. and quarantine it. This is amazing, I must be honest, because like it's bent now like a magazine, and then fold it over, like uh, uh, the technology. And you would see that all your, the applications are on there. I mean, you've, oh, yeah, I'm totally uh, you've got Facebook, you've got YouTube, you've got I'm not going to scroll WhatsApp. through your gallery. That can be quite <laughs> dangerous. But I also heard that Huawei is doing a lot of collaborations and investing in a lot of like local businesses. Yeah. What is the, what's happening there? I, I think for us, of like? course, Developing an ecosystem is a long-term strategy, sure. um, and it's quite um, a huge task. Yeah. So we have experience in developing ecosystems. Of course, China being the largest smartphone market globally, yeah. um, they don't run on Google services. So for many a year, we had ecosystems in there. But it's not about a copy and paste. Yeah. We want to find S South African or African solutions for South African problems. Yeah. Um, to take, for example, a small company that in South Africa or a developer that's creating an app. He's brilliant in his mind and technical capable um, in his garage for that matter, but he doesn't have the resources, the financial backing or access to compete with the Google or any of the large corporations across the world. Yeah. But Huawei is present in 170 countries. Yeah. We have over 500 million monthly active users. Wow. We have access to those markets. So we want to take South African businesses, South African brands, and individuals to those markets. High five. Like, yeah. that is brilliant. That and, is really cool. And, you know, when you look at also the integration of HMS, um, most manufacturers will preload applications on their yeah. handsets from yeah. factory. And it's usually the European apps, yeah. the American apps. Why can't we preload South African apps? So you don't have the U2 album on here? <laughs> 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 nice one. Yeah. Well, that, that's what many people complain about, right? Is the bloatware and the yeah. stuff that you just don't yeah. want, but it's there. Yeah. So this is what we're trying to avoid, but we're saying we'll give customized solutions for yeah. locals. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you and for, for having explaining. me. This is amazing. Well done. You guys have been you. very productive this year. Now, Huawei is looking stronger than ever, and Huawei Mobile Services has you covered for all of your smartphone needs. And make sure that you keep an eye out for the launch of the new Mate XS. Ah.